Alright, if you saw my previous video, then you will know that this is a furnace array with 1,280 functional furnaces. And if you want to know how to build it, this is the right place for that. Or if you're just a curious cat and you want some information on how this works, I will be going into detail on that. But without any further ado, further ado, let's get started. So, this is the template I've worked out here. This is just about the bottom layer of the main machine. So, you're going to need a 103 by about a 32 block area to work with. With. So this does go off a little bit to the side, but you can see it's just a little bit. The bulk of this thing is about 103 blocks long, 32 wide. And your center point will be right here. So I'm not going to show you exactly how to build this. If you're familiar with my channel, then you know that I don't, I don't like that kind of stuff. But this is the exact template. You're going to have eight rows of two wide rails spaced two blocks apart on either side. And then these will be nine blocks apart. So you can kind of space it out just like that. The rails are going to work out just like this, if you need some more reference, that the furnaces will come right above the rail, and then the unloader will look just like this, and then they will end right about here. So the rail actually goes out an extra block so the minecart can loop around and collect all the items below. And that's it. So these furnaces are 40 blocks long, and then you, of course, go out two more. So you'll go 42 rails out, and then one, two, three, four, five rail, five blocks here is where you'll have your wiring. So you can just map it out like this. And what I'm going to do is we're actually going to start with the unloaders. So yeah, the very first thing we're going to do is unload all the items, and I'll show you how to build that right now. So once again, if you're familiar with my channel, then you'll know that I like to do a lot of these minecart unloaders, and that's because they are incredibly useful for a lot of different things. So this very block here is where you're going to have your diagonal uh, detector rail. Detector rail is how we know how much the minecart has. And below it, we're going to need four hoppers that are going to look just like ah, just like so. And we're going to need to have another minecart below it centered right on all these hoppers. So this isn't exactly centered, but using ender chest will keep it under this main block, and the minecart will be able to hit all four hoppers. So just you can come up from uh, from on top or kind of nudge it in. There are a lot more better ways to do it than the way I'm doing it, but we're going to use F3 plus B so you can see exactly where the minecart is. And now it'll be over all four hoppers. So if I throw in a stack of items, you'll see it. It'll be unloading evenly to all four of these. And there you go. You now have a one input, four output. Congratulations, the tutorial's over. Just kidding. Now we got to push in a block. So I like to use a half slab here just so you can access the minecart. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to have to take a piston just to push this in place, so there you go. And the minecart is securely in place. If you wish, you can now remove these inner chests. I'm going to leave it in place for the, for the purposes of, of this tutorial. However, they no longer have any purpose. Uh, as long as you don't nudge the minecart, this will be completely fine. The next thing to do is just to ramp a, a detector rail up on top like this, and that should work fine. Now you're going to need to go out just a few blocks so that you can uh, read from this thing. So the way that we actually power the... We're going to need to get some redstone. So the way that we power this fence gate here is with a lot of different components. Yeah, you're going to need like one of each of these. So you're going to need a torch, a couple pieces of dust, a redstone repeater, and a repeater, and a comparator. So this will just be reading out from the detector rail. And I wouldn't recommend putting in your minecart yet, but we will be doing that later. As for the unloader, it just gets pretty simple. So you're going to have two droppers facing down into a water stream, two hoppers just to make sure this thing stays fully powered all the time, and then we're going to use just a very basic uh, observer clock. So if you're doing this in a version that's not, uh, of, if you don't have observers in the version you're making this, there are plenty of other alternatives for that. You can just look it up. I'll link a playlist below where I've done distribution systems, and then there are definitely alternatives. But in this case, observer clocks are the best ways to do this. Now this is going at a slower speed right now. However, when the piston is pushed up, you'll see that it'll actually be going at twice the speed. So uh, right now it's going to go slow, but when this thing unloads, it'll be plenty fast. And that's it. That's the entire distribution system. I'm not going to make a water stream for this right now, because that should be pretty trivial. Of course, I'm going to provide a world download for this. You guys can check out what we have over here. All the water streams just uh, lead to a central point. And now you just have to do that for every single one of these. When you're done, all 16 of these different places, all these, all 16 of these rails should have a system that looks just like this, except not quite. So what I'm going to have to do here is push a rail in place, because if we push it from the side, we're going to get that minecart not in the right spot. So let's just push that down. And now the block is in the right place. Note that I am building this east to west. However, you could build this north to south. It would just be a little bit more tricky with the rails. Uh, one thing I saw a long time ago, actually, believe it or not, in a mumbo-jumbo video, 
He used a furnace array where he told you you couldn't do this because the rails would connect. However, it is quite easy to avoid this problem if you just build it like that. So if you build it north to south, it's pretty easy to get this to work how you want it to. However, if you want to keep, if you want to make this easy on yourself and it doesn't matter, um, east to west is definitely the way to do it. But yeah, just make sure all of them are just like this and uh, let me get back to you when I'm done. For building this in survival mode, I just wanted to give you guys a quick tip. I would recommend, oops, I would recommend building the block that the detector rail goes up against first, just so that you can push the minecarts in and then just nudge them into place. That should work completely fine. Another couple notes I thought of while building this is that I, you don't have to use slabs over the minecarts. You could really use just about any block that's not like a redstone block because it'll mess up the hoppers. I just like to use slabs for no good reason and of course you don't need to use quartz. Also if you are really cheap and you don't have that many ender chests you could dupe dragon eggs. Cakes would work fine. Um, I don't know if anvils work. I'm from an ancient era but of course normal chests have the same hitbox as well. Anything that just gets the minecart over it. In fact a new command member of ours uses mob heads because it perfectly centers the minecart over all the hoppers. That works too. You know, do whatever is good for you. So long, of course, as the minecart on the detector rail is actually getting sucked out from the one below. Then, then it won't work if you don't do that. Alright, I'll put a note in the video when I edit this, but uh, it turns out the wiring for the unloaders need to go on the other side because you'll be getting in the way of some of the wiring here. Uh, really simple fix if you already built this. Just move the droppers, just break them. Move them one block over, and then uh, put the wiring on the other side. Should be completely the same. Sorry. Another thing I noticed while I was building this, yeah, a lot of these. Uh, a lot of different people worked on this furnace array, so a lot of people took a few different approaches. And one thing I found that I actually liked was I removed the ender chest and made this rail go all the way to the end, where you could just leave the ender chest in place or whatever you used, not actually break it, just place a block on top and have this rail be shorter. This would result in one eighth the distance of a block speed efficiency. I don't know, the whole rail would be shorter, so you'd technically be collecting items faster. I can't promise you would ever notice any improvement from that. But working on the other side, uh, this actually messed me up because I was looking at over here, it divots, and over here it's the same width because the wiring is going to look like this. Uh, these will end up being three blocks apart where the wiring will match up. So when you build the other side, don't get confused. It just looks a little bit different. All right, surely by now you've got all your uh, unloaders set up, all your minecarts in place. Oh, down there, not on the rails up here yet. But, uh, <laughs> so these two sides are different, but not really, and uh, here we go. So now it's time to move on to the main clock of the system. This is quite literally the heart that makes everything go around. So you're going to want to come down from your center point, the left center point, uh, one, two, three, four blocks, and then you're going to want to come diagonally one here. So this is where everything's going to happen. Let me just grab a building block. You're going to want to make this... Uh, just like this shape. So I've actually been using Schematica to help me out here. So you're going to want a bunch of blocks just like this, go five blocks out here, and then they're probably going to want to be built up just like so. So in here you're going to want to make a clock, which is very simply exactly what you'd think. It is six repeaters and a redstone torch, which gives us an exactly 200 game tick clock, which will fuel the entire system. So uh, yeah, let's just build that up, get everything in place, and then show you what this is going to go into. Alright, so the clock is actually going to go into something a little bit tricky here. You're going to need to place a piston right on top of the block. Let me just get rid of the schematic. Right on top of the block that this clock leads into, you're going to want an observer facing up. <laughs> It'll pull it back. Uh, if you want to shut this clock down, which I would recommend while building this, you can easily just power this repeater or extend this piston back here. This piston will be powered from a long trail of dropper or observers facing down. We'll get to that later, but we're just going to leave this piston extended for now. From this piston, you're going to want to have a piston here, a block behind that, a piston here, an observer facing up over there, and an observer facing up over here. And then it should look a little something like this. Let me just remove a little bit of those marker blocks. And we're going to have to get rid of our middle blocks, unfortunately, because they are in my way. But you should have something that looks similar to this. Over this observer, you're going to want to place a block like this. And then I think I'm going to leave Schematica on just so you guys can visualize where this is going, because I believe this is going to help me as much as it's going to help you. So this is part of the reason I don't usually do tutorials, because oftentimes they're a little bit tricky. But we're going to need to remove this block just to make way for this observer facing just like so. And we're going to want a piston facing off from here. 
So if I clear away the schematic, you should see it will look a little something like this. When this piston extends, it's going to power this block and then force this piston forward. And we're going to have to actually remove these blocks just so that we have space to work with. This comparator is actually going to be modified a bit from the other unloaders. It's going to face something like this. And then I'm not sure exactly how we did this. Uh, yes, yeah, so it was a repeater facing in. Okay. And then it's just a piece of dust here. And then let me just grab a repeater. And then the torch is actually going to be on the side of this block. So it'll work just the same as the other, just a little bit, uh, a little bit different. And then from here, we're going to want to continue the piston chain. I believe this is one of the chains that actually controls the uh, fuel distribution carts. So let me just get everything in place. And there we go. So there you go. Should look something like this. Uh, hope you're bearing with me. Let's continue. Next layer, let's place all these blocks just to, just as we go. So as I predicted, uh, this line here is actually going to have a bunch of rails on top of it. This is where the uh, fuel carts will go. Uh, you're going to want to, I didn't mention this earlier actually, but the redstone blocks and the rails uh, are really up to you. I'm not going to show you exactly how we did it because they're pretty arbitrary. I think this this redstone block is at the limit over here. So there's eight, red, there's eight powered rails and then the redstone block and then 16 in the middle with another redstone block and then we just spaced it until they were all powered. Uh, how you do that really doesn't matter so long as the redstone blocks themselves don't interfere with any kind of wiring. So, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if all of these need to be slabs, but if you're going to recreate this, then I'm thinking you should do what I'm doing just so that you keep it uh, nice and even. So, I'm not sure exactly which blocks you need to place here, but it should go up to this um, up to this uh, fence gate here, and then they should fill in just like so, with just about every block in here covered. Uh, I will remove the schematic here and there just so you guys can see exactly what it's supposed to look like. Uh, I will be providing a world download of this entire design, uh, including the tutorial done, and I will be including a schematic if you guys want to use it. I would highly recommend downloading Schematica and using that for these builds because it will make things considerably easier, especially since it's so complex. But there you go. Without the schematic, it should look a little something like this. These blocks will go right up to these uh, fence gates, and it will get a lot easier once we get the furnaces in place. So that will be the next step, and that will make things a lot clearer. Uh, we are going to ignore this slime block for now because this is the on-off switch, and this needs to be a, a, a melon, but we'll get to that later. So next is the furnaces. Uh, I'm going to ignore all these rails for now just to get these furnaces in place, and uh, if you're not opposed to this, then this is one of the reasons I recommend Schematica. So what you're going to want to be doing as far as placing the furnaces go is you're going to want these furnaces to be 40 blocks long, and then you're going to want them right next to each other in batches of... Uh, well, right next to each other in rows of two, and then eight long on either side. And then you'll have hoppers facing sideways into every furnace. And that should just about cover it. These hoppers that uh, we're placing now are actually for the fuel. Uh, in fact, one of the builders, uh, while we were designing this thing, uh, he poured a water bucket and broke all the rails, and that got into these sideways hoppers, which, if that happens to you, I mean, that's okay, but you'd preferably want fuel in there. However, it, with the hoppers facing down, if anything gets in there that's not an item, you'll see, uh, and not an item that can be cooked, this will clog up the furnace and it'll never work again. So just be very careful of that. I'm going to get all these furnaces in place and then destroy a little bit of the stuff in the middle just so you guys can see uh, what it'll look like. All right, we're going to skip some of the wiring in the middle for now. I will come back to it, of course. But one of the things you're going to want to be doing while you're running around placing all these furnaces is actually putting the hoppers facing down on them from the top. So you're just going to want every furnace to have a hopper. And then the rails going sideways. I already mentioned earlier that these will group up if you're in the right orientation. And I also showed you how to fix that, so don't worry. Uh, one thing I almost didn't mention is uh, the rails will have to come out a couple blocks here. And these will have rails on top of them. So just make sure that the rails are connected like so. Let me grab a normal rail here. You're going to want them to be connected like this and not like this. <laughs> That'll break it. You want these rails to be able to turn and make a full loop. So you're going to want these to be facing just like so. And then just keep making these little uh, U-turns like so. Oh, see, that's exactly what you don't want to happen. You want it to look like that. There you go. For each of these. And then uh, get all that in place and we'll, we'll collect when it's done. 
All right, the last thing to do for the furnaces is to place the rails on top and then some redstone blocks in between. Just like before, how you place the redstone blocks is really up to you. Just make sure that every powered rail is in fact powered, and uh, that should be pretty much it. There's really nothing out here that you're going to mess up, as long as a redstone block isn't powering one of these hoppers. If that happens at all, or if you ac accidentally place a detector rail for some reason, that is definitely an issue. So just try to avoid that, but so long as these rails loop on the top, loop wide on the outside, and loop you know, in the in the middle, uh, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So yeah, just get all the rails on top of all these hoppers and then redstone blocks to make sure everything's powered. All right, let's back up to the wiring and let's get these rails in place. Let's get rid of Schematica just so that I don't confuse anyone because the stuff going everywhere is a little annoying. So you're going to just want simple redstone powered rails going along here and then you're going to want to turn it just like so and then get it into the position. So this is a little bit tricky. Uh, we actually... We changed the direction of this rail four different times to get it to go exactly where we want it to. And these all need to be connected to start, and you want it to be facing that direction to start. So it should look something like that. And then these will be powered by redstone blocks up above. And that should look something like that. And then the redstone below will power this, uh, don't worry. And then you want to get some wiring in place. So let's steal some dust, get that here, and then you're going to want repeaters. So we actually use repeaters instead of dust wherever possible because it's recently become very well known that uh, redstone dust creates a lot more lag than people might think. And to cut down on that in this design, we use as little of it as possible. And in doing that, it's actually made this entire design quite lag friendly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I've just been placing blocks here as I've been talking. Right on top of this piston down here, you're going to want to place an observer facing into this block. Block. And then above that, I believe we actually placed some uh, three tick repeaters. They need, these need to be exactly three ticks because remember that 200 game tick clock down there needs to be specifically 200 game ticks. So every uh, piece of this circuit needs to um, be the exact same time so that we don't mess anything up. Because if it's only a game tick off, then items will eventually start backing up into the furnaces. It's really not a, a huge problem actually, but we try to avoid that. So just place it exactly as shown here. Alright, last but not least, I just want to finish up this one block to complete this unloader, and that should be all the wiring for this layer. Let's move on and make things a lot more complicated, but also not really. So, uh, what all these redstone blocks are is simply doing exactly what we already did earlier. What we're doing here is making these loops for the rails. Uh, they're going to be the exact same thing we did on the other side, just kind of opposite, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So we got two things going on here. First off, you're going to want to loop these rails just like so. As I said earlier, just make these go around just like so. Normal rails here, powered rails here, and continue this pattern for, oops, not there. Continue this pattern until everything is made. But what's also going on is I, compl I filled in these blocks making this uh, alternating pattern where repeaters are going to go on top. So that's saying red because these are supposed to be powered. What all of these repeaters are doing is actually forcing these on. So if I place a dust here and then power this, you should see that all of the fence gates in this little area have actually turned off because the torches have been forced off. This is how the fuel mine carts are actually disabled. And the same thing will happen on the other side, except that this should be powered by, I believe, a torch. So it should look like that. And then that should disable just about every single one, if I'm not wrong. Yep. So every every cart would be completely stopped. If you wanted to go ahead and place in your minecarts, this would be a good time. If you already did, then they've just been bouncing back and forth. Uh, but the default state of them should be off. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue this. Uh, the wiring should be pretty much the same for each of these. I'll go into closer detail in a second. But what you want to focus on is getting uh, these blocks alternating in place it becomes a lot clearer to look at when hold on just a second for my own note there yeah so this is actually going to go off uh, somewhere else but it should clear up quite a lot to look at once you get all your rails in place should look something like this so i'm going to go through place all these blocks get the rails in place and then um, talk about what we're going to do next all right to simplify this i'm actually going to explain what's going on so this is the overview uh, this part in the middle is not done, I'll get into that in just a second. But just know that these rails here will be escalating pretty soon here, so it'll be built up just like so. Same on the other side, let me just get that in place right now. Uh, I'm using solid blocks here in the schematic, they're uh, half slabs, doesn't matter. Uh, same on the other side, these will be towering up as well. 
So these rails in the middle are a little bit tricky. What you're going to need is all of these rails will have blocks behind them, just like so, and they need to be on a junction. So in this case, we have just a normal rail here, but this is facing into these. This needs to go out into the rail out there. So this is a torch that we will be using later on, but just place a redstone dust facing into a block and then place this normal rail, just so that they're all leading to the same place. This is because the minecarts will be sucked down by a piston and placed onto these rails, so they need to all be going in the same direction. And then you can just put the normal, put the blocks there for them to bounce off of. And it look, should look something like this. And then for the other side, you want all these rails to be in the same direction. And uh, just like that, should work fine. And then all of these rails are just making a loop, so the minecarts go in a circle. And then uh, we're actually going to skip ahead here. We're not going to go layer by layer. We're actually going to build up these towers. So I'll show you just what you need to do in a second. So the four tracks for the uh, input distribution minecarts are going to go up just like so. They're going to go up uh, one rail at the top, two, three, four, five blocks from this middle bit here, and then they'll uh, drop off right here. We'll have a glass block or really a many block just so that it drops straight down. Uh, but this is how tall these need to be, and they'll look something like this. Same thing on the other side. You're going to want to go up five blocks as I started here. One, two, three, four, five. And then the same thing on the other side. Just like that. And then over here we're going to have these uh, for the fuel carts. So you can see that the rails are actually going to meet up in a spot just like this. So they're all going to be sitting on top of this redstone block. And this is where the uh, mine carts will actually get pushed off by the piston. And this is where the fuel carts um, build up. And then they sit here waiting to be used to refuel all the furnaces. But these staircases on the side are a little bit tricky, so they're actually going to come up like this, and then they're going to loop around. Let me just make sure I'm doing that right. Uh, yeah, they're just going to come along like here, and then we use a redstone block just to re redo the signal. And then they need to connect up here. So what's going on here is there's actually a long rail coming over here. So let's start back at the end here. Uh, you want the mine carts to come along this rail here, and then build up just like this, and then you want it to turn. And I don't think that's how minecarts typically work. I was right, that's not going to work. It needs to go like this. Aha. Uh -huh. Be careful of that. Whenever you're doing this kind of stuff, that can mess it up. But you're going to want a normal rail there. There, And then I'm using solid blocks instead. It needs to connect. Where are we going? Okay, cool. And then you just want to make this long rail come all the way back to the center. And this will be the exact same thing on the other side. I shouldn't have to show you exactly where because it's exactly... The same. It's completely mirrored. A lot of this redstone is the same on either side, so uh, don't need to worry about that too much. But then this rail just needs to come down a little bit. These will meet here. And then where exactly is this going to go? Okay. So these um, detector rails are in fact needed. They actually power these pistons. Uh, and this piston will actually pop up with an observer and then trigger all that in just a second. I'll show you what's going on. But you just want these rails to meet up in the middle. So they should be lined up like this. All right, so trying to take it one step at a time. Uh, linking up these was pretty trivial. They should just meet up right in the center here, or something similar to that if I hadn't messed up. Yeah, it looks like I, yeah. Okay, there we go. They should meet up right in the center here, and then you'll have detector rails in the corners, just like so. So uh, the rails on the corners are, are in these little zigzags are actually um, intentional. So we had it go off to the side here, because as it turned out, the fuel carts had about three items left. So you'd have them be here full of four stacks of coal and 61. So we actually have them come out to the side here just to give it, and I'm not even joking, just three game ticks more delay so that when it comes all the way back, it doesn't uh, completely mess up. So, yeah, making these rails along here is pretty straightforward. Just do the exact same thing we did on the other side. Should look something like that, and they should all come over here. So all the different uh, fuel carts are going to go to the same spot. And I think I'm missing something here. Yep. In the design, it was actually changed to be a redstone block in this spot. And that keeps happening, and I don't like it. And there we go. So all the rails should look something like this. So I guess that should lead us to the fuel loader. Um, that'll be pretty easy, and then we can get on to the, the difficult parts. So all the wiring in the middle isn't even that difficult. It's pretty straightforward if you follow my instructions. Um, it's actually the placing of the minecarts because we're going to need about 40 minecarts in the middle of this thing and that's going to be 
that's going to be very complicated to put in. Uh, not complicated, just you need to do it in a very specific order. But hopefully, if you've been following the tutorial accurately, you should see that we've got a lot of this wiring in place. There's uh, not a whole lot left to do uh, objectively. So, like, let's let's do the fuel stuff first, though. So, in this spot here, you can actually want a piston pushing off. I had a sticky piston prepared because it was already in my inventory. Uh, this was actually a sticky piston for the longest time, and in the showcase video, I believe, as well. But at the very last second, Nuke decided to change, flip the script on us. So, uh, yeah. This should be off by default, if I'm not mistaken. That's interesting. Uh, this pistol will just push off here. Let me just, uh, yeah, let's get these pistons in. Alright, so that piston is powered for now, that should be uh, unpowered. This is actually where all the fuel my carts are going to sit. Uh, but then we're going to have a couple pistons facing off to the side here. So as I said, these pistons actually uh, kick off the other fuel my carts. We're not going to need that. Let's just get all these in place. This observer is going to pop up, hit this block, and then we're going to have redstone dust facing into the piston, just like so. And then there will be a piston here. Let me just grab this down there. Okay. This piston is going to push off all the fuel mine carts. You're going to want all of these to be... Oops. You're going to want all the rails to be uh, coming up to a center point here. So you can just break that. And then this is where the fuel carts will sit as they're refueling. And then complete the circuit just like so. So when, you, uh, when the mine cart passes over, I can demonstrate this very easily. It'll just come in, kick off the other one, and then it'll replace it. But you can see it started to get on the other rail. That, that mean, that's why we actually put these blocks here. So believe it or not, the mine cart will actually go straight up through the block and then sit exactly where we want it to. And uh, that's pretty much perfect. Okay, so this next part is up to you how you do it. I'm going to show you exactly how we are going to build it on uh, in our system. So ours is designed around a train station, so we actually need all of this to be one wide. Uh, there are better, better alternatives, but basically what we use is a shulker box unloader for the fuel. You don't even have to use a shulker box unloader. You could just put a normal chest above this, but it allows you to use you know about 27 times the amount of storage of a normal chest, so it's highly recommended that you use a shulker box unloader. But uh, building this thing is actually a little interesting how you're going to have to do it kind of backwards. So we're going to need a couple minecarts in place. Let me just grab a normal, normal half slab here. So the easiest way I've found is to put the half slab right here, right above where the minecarts would be sitting. Uh, break the minecart. And then there will be, and then it'll kind of be half in your way. This is where you need to place a block. That does need to be a solid block. So what you're going to want to do is make sure this minecart won't nudge at all. So there we go. Get the full block in place. Push it in with a piston, and there you go. You can actually break that block now. We are going to need an activator rail to power this minecart because that'll be unloading our shulker box. And then from here, uh, let me get rid of those vestigial blocks over here. Uh, you just make a basic unloader. So this is exactly what we're doing. I'm going to build this up first and then show you because it's all one wide and it should be pretty obvious. Alright, if you'd like to use this exact design, this is pretty much it. Uh, there are a couple things to note here. This is a sticky piston. Uh, this is a dispenser. This is a chest facing into it. In fact, we use a trap chest on the other world because that actually doubles as activating the dispenser. Because if you don't have any shulker boxes in here, it won't do that. Uh, you do have an option here though. What I found out was there are a couple things you can do here. You can use a lever to power this piston on and off like that. And that'll work completely fine because uh, uh, compared to read items, power this, and then when it's empty, it triggers the system. And then that'll actually go through and mess up. Yep, that should be another repeater. I thought something was wrong. So then when it's empty, it'll trigger the piston, then it'll dispense another shulker box. What you could also do is in place of having a normal block here, you could have a, an act... A, an, a, an observer. <laughs> you could have an observer here and then that just toggles the piston on and off. So you'd have, um, there you go, you'd uh, detect it as full or you'd detect it as empty which would trigger this back down and then when it's full it'll trigger it back down. And then when it's empty it'll trigger it. You could do whatever but kind of last minute someone replaced my observer with a solid block and uh, I realized that a powered rail would work fine. So what is this piston up here? I think it's about time we finally uh, trigger this detection. So this won't actually do everything if I trigger everything here. We're not going to build this line just yet. But what this is is a very long chain of observers aiming, observers aiming straight down. So let me just continue this along. Oops, I built that in the wrong spot. 
This observer needs to... What am I doing? Okay. So this actually powers an activator rail, which brings it straight down. All right. Let's follow this all the way down to the bottom. What this does is toggles this piston on and off. So you can see that we have it turning off the system right now. However, when it's empty, it would turn another signal um, because the piston just moves its block back and forth. Uh, and this is so that when the fuel, when the system is empty, it'll unpower this rail and then it'll extend this piston forward uh, because its normal state would be like here and then when it's empty it'll trigger it like that so that it turns the whole system off and that's just it detecting that it's out of fuel and I'm gonna leave that in place right now so that when we refill it when we fill this thing up with uh, coal later to test this it'll actually turn the system on for us that's an optional feature you don't need to have that in here but uh, I think it's actually a good a time as any to do this I'm gonna use obsidian so you can use any kind of immovable block that you want. Uh, I prefer obsidian. It, you can use melons or I think pumpkins don't get moved by slime blocks. You can pretty much use whatever. And this block down here doesn't actually have a purpose. So nothing here can be moved by the slime block, but you're going to want it to be just like so. So you're going to want two slime blocks here with a redstone block on top. And then I need to snag a piston somewhere. Here we go. There should be a piston here which forgets its redstone block all the same. I just use slime blocks to make it a little bit shorter. And then this will connect to our main input for the system. But we're not quite that far along yet, so uh, let's move on to the middle. So I placed a repeater under here. That was not on accident. We're going to need a torch in the middle. And let's actually get this back to layer mode so I can see what I'm doing. Alright, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. There are going to be a lot of wires going everywhere, and I'm not sure where to start, so I figure we might as well just start placing blocks. So, uh, we're going to have, you know what, I'm going to build this up first and then explain it later, because this is going to get a little complicated. Scratch that, I think I'm just going to build this entire thing on camera. Some of these are going to require some normal quartz blocks, because... There's going to be so many wires going everywhere that I think it's easiest if you just follow exactly what I'm doing. So what I'm placing here are these are the blocks that will be controlling the uh, distribution carts on and off. So you can see there will be a torch just like this and then two repeaters. Oops. Uh, two repeaters. The reason we use repeaters, again, is because it's le it's less laggy than dust, and this doesn't really matter the speed of it. Um, the carts down here, as long as they don't take ages to disable, it doesn't matter, or turn on and off, it doesn't matter if they're all, like, within a second of each other, it's just so long as they all turn on. So, yeah, you're just going to want to copy these blocks exactly as I place them. So these repeaters are actually going to be linked up to the main input. Uh, this is going to be just like so, and uh, that'll... I'll be explained later, I'm sure. And then uh, place blocks like this, torch on the side, dust here. Uh, this is, once again, same as the other side. I don't know why I'm using slabs. We were using slabs in the design, but they're not really needed. So, yeah, a couple repeaters just like this. I already know where this part's going. Uh, uh, well, I... One of the reasons I don't actually know what what everything does exactly on here is like I mentioned earlier that a lot of different people actually worked on this design together, so I don't know everything. For example, yeah, it looks like this redstone block was not needed, so let's just get rid of that. And then we're going to want a solid block here for reasons that I'm not entirely sure. Oh yeah, it leads up to a redstone dust, why wouldn't it? <laughs> so yeah, and this is probably going to get cut off. Why is that not... These are two normal dusts. I'm not sure how that works. But this is currently powering this, which is a big no-no, because this rail needs to be going the other direction. So I'm finding a lot of vestigial blocks in this design, which means that this is a slab, for example, that, according to the schematic, doesn't actually have a purpose. I don't see that it does anything. And that's because this design goes through a lot of tinkering, and I've, I've even seen this in advanced tree farms I've built in the past, where they are just completely, you know, there are a lot of different... Uh, blocks where one time I just found a floating iron block that didn't really have a purpose and uh, that was be I once found a floating iron block that didn't have a purpose because we don't always every time we destroy something we don't always think to replace it so in this design I've already removed them but there were some observers where we were going to t detect the furnaces leading out of them but it turned out that there were a better way to detect when fuel was empty so yeah uh, just <laughs> Just going to ignore those blocks for now and move on, uh, but hopefully you guys are following this. I'm not that great at... I don't know. I don't, ma I don't make that many tutorials because I'm not the best at them. I don't always know how to show these designs, so a daunting task like showing how to build a 1280 furnace array that I didn't 100% design myself is definitely um, 
a lot of homework for a newbie like me, but hopefully you guys can bear with me because I'm trying my best here. So now we need an observer, and that was supposed to be my pick block key because Schematica changed it for some reason. Let's actually place this twice so that the system... Did I just... What happened to that... I don't know what happened to that slime block. I'm going to put that back right now. I was going to do it later. It turns out I have it on me. Perfect. Okay. So this observer needs to be... Okay, this observer needs to be powered in an interesting way. So what we're going to have going on here are a couple repeaters. These repeaters go into a system that powers another system. I bet you didn't see that one coming. This looks like it's wrong. Yep, that needs to be a torch. So this is the torch that just powers the distribution carts on and off. And this is another torch that goes into a piston. So what this piston does is it is going to be responsible for moving the minecarts into place when we load this system. In fact, I can explain this better if I show it over here. So I'm going to make a trip back over here just so what I'm doing doesn't look like nonsense. Let's hop into Spectator and get a better look at this. Uh, these pistons will be these pistons here. This is the one I just placed. So these are going to be pushing the minecarts into place because these need to be flip-flopping back and forth. Minecart needs to go over here and then over here and then back and forth, back and forth. And that's what that is. And then these are the wires that we just placed. And this is actually the on-off system. This gets controlled with the flip-flopping pistons. It's just a convenient way to toggle this on and off. And it fits right in place with the uh, with the clock. So there's really no rhyme or reason to that. It just worked out. All right, back to following the schematic like the Bible. So this is just another <laughs> reinforcing reason as to why I just love Schematica because... It makes things like this so much less complicated when you can just uh, follow the blueprints. So we're just placing blocks here, and they go like this. Uh, these are the pistons that are going to be pulling the minecarts down, I mentioned earlier. These are where they're all going to sit, and then there will be rails on top of these. I'm going to place all these blocks in place, and then uh, show you guys later. Okay, I'm back. That block's not needed. So, it should look something like this. It is at least mirrored on either side, so if you built it right on one side, it should be right on the other. Um... I'm hoping, oh man, this is part of the tutorial, I'm not entirely sure if this is completely easy to follow, but I'm trying my best. So, it should look a little something like this. Uh, the, these rails over here, if you built this in the other direction, I'd recommend building these outer ones first, because this is exactly how you need to place them to get them in there anyway. But let me just do a slow overview just to make sure that you guys got everything. This block does need to be a half slab so that it doesn't power that rail and mess everything up. Make sure these are all curving out. Perfect, 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 perfect. And then just repeaters instead of dust. And then that, oops. <laughs> and then uh, torches go into here. These are two alternating wires. So one's powering on this block over here. And then this one is actually going to be powering off to the side. You see it's going into a dust. And then there's going to be a piston right here. So let's uh, let's move on to the next layer, shall we? We're progressing. So this piston has an andesite block on it. That doesn't really matter. And this piston has a glass block on it. That also doesn't really matter. But the reoccurring theme here is there's going to be a piston here, piston here, block on this one. Anything that's, you know, I guess any block would work on this one. Just so long as when it pushes forward, it gets it onto this block. And there needs to be a solid block behind these rails so that the, the minecarts can actually send off. And then exactly the same on the other side. You're going to want pistons, blocks on front, glass or whatever, doesn't matter. And then dust back here, solid block to power the piston. I think I forgot that over there. We can go back, no problem. Beauty, beautiful thing about Minecraft is you don't have to do everything right the exact first time. Unlike Pokemon, where I found that there's a Pokemon I can't catch anymore because apparently it's only available for a certain time. But don't worry, guys. I, I got it. I got it. It'll be fine. And more wiring. So, these torches are going to be leading up from below. This torch tower continues up, goes into these dust, oops, and you saw a little bit of the wiring that's going to happen here. So, on a clock, this thing is going to come and then trigger these pistons in the middle, and these pistons on the outside. That'll just replace the carts. And it's not triggering on this side. I wonder why that is. That's probably because this block isn't here. I don't know. Ah, it wasn't triggering because the torches don't update on a one tick pulse like that. So we're going to need more blocks on the top here. These are all things that will make sense later because uh, in Schematica we're looking in 2D mode, which means we're looking at one thin slice of the square here. Uh, we're actually looking at a square when we're trying to build a cube, so it's 
just kind of some multi-dimensional talk there for you. Whereas Schematica 3D mode shows you everything you need to see, but then there's stuff in your face, so then we lower the dimension count back down to two. I'm not going to place all this glass in the middle here, and I'll tell you why. So all this glass in the middle is meant for you to not bump the minecarts. There needs to be dust next to these pistons. Uh, the minecarts in the middle will be the trickiest part, and... Uh, conven conveniently enough, I am also an expert in this area, so I'll be able to show you guys exactly what needs to happen. These are the wrong blocks, because somebody built with quartz blocks. This is my way of rambling along so that you guys can place exactly the right blocks in exactly the right places. Should start to look a little something like this. This thing is getting some shape, guys. This lady is forming. Oh my gosh. Uh, these rails are still not powered. I'm sure I just missed a redstone block somewhere. Uh, most of these are just uh, normal glass. So th these glass are actually necessary because the minecarts need to not move when you get when you push them and stuff. Because there will be stacks of minecarts right here, and a minecart's not a full block. You can see when I place one down, it'll go like this. And if you don't have a glass on top of here, the piston will push two minecarts over when we only want one. And so we need these glass in these spots, and I don't think that that, yeah, it is necessary. Okay, so we're going to need this for some future wire. Put a torch here, and then some more uh, some more slabs that I'm, I'm sure will be become useful in, in the near future. And then more dust, and okay, so this is actually the main input for the whole system. So what we actually have going on here is this dropper, which was right here, will actually have about 10 items in it. So when you actually start the system, you'll force this torch off for just long enough to unload all of these, uh, all 10 items from the hopper into the dropper, which will then turn this signal on, which, as you can see, goes right down to these repeaters that we placed earlier, and then that turns on the whole system. And then it, um, every time the system cycles, it triggers this torch, which powers the dropper, and then that actually cycles 10 times so that it goes through two rounds so that it cooks all the items that are left over in the system because the detection for it being on is in a different spot, blah, blah, blah. And then it'll actually uh, go eight more times to distribute coal to all of the furnaces a couple times, or once every eight rounds, just so that um, you have plenty of fuel when you start up next time. So these minecarts are about, I think it's time for us to place some minecarts. So let's actually get all this glass in place. Ah, that's the wrong button. Uh, what actually happened there was Schematica is placing a couple command blocks that shouldn't be there. So let's get into the minecarts. Okay, let's, let's do the fun part. Let's do all 40 of them right now, shall we? We're going to need powered rails and fences and maybe panes. I don't know. We're definitely going to need ender chests. So the first thing we're going to need to do is I'm going to need solid blocks as well. Let me just get some. Actually, are these normal? Yep. Okay. So this minecart here is going to need to hit uh, both this piston and this piston. So we're actually going to align it over a couple ender chests, but we're going to need two of them. So we're going to go one, two minecarts, break that piston, and I'm going to need a redstone block for this. You will need to follow these directions almost exactly, or you'll mess something up. So, this piston is going to need to do this. It needs to push that minecart in place, break it, or else it'll suck it back through. You see, if it'll it'll do that thing. It'll it'll move it back, so you got to break the piston. And that's it. This minecart is completely in place. Once again, you can remove the ender chests. I will be. And because we placed the minecart up there, it'll be doing that. No problem. So what this means is effectively when you have a minecart, this doesn't seem right. Yep, this is supposed to have a nothing on it. There you go. So this minecart and this minecart will be filled at the exact same time. If I throw in a stack of items, this minecart and this minecart will both be sucking out all those items almost perfectly evenly. Uh, I only put that in one of the minecarts, but when it goes to both, um, it fills in very similarly. So that's how we load all of the minecarts. Now we just need to do the exact same thing on either side. So let's get our ender chests in place and then drop one, two minecarts. Some food for thought while I'm building this. The reason I'm not nudging these, and I actually could be wrong for this amount of minecarts, but the reason I'm not nudging these is the fact that this is not... Is that not? That looks right, but I don't think it's right. Hmm. Oh, I see what I did wrong. The reason I'm not nudging these is because uh, you can't nudge more than one minecart or you'll screw everything up, the world will explode, and then you'll have to load it back up. I mean, maybe not in all cases, but when you, when you nudge the minecarts. We actually had a case where... Uh, somebody nudged one of the minecarts over here and it bumped off all 40 of them and it screwed everything up. So just be sure to use pistons so that you don't screw anything up or else, oops, there you go. Usually, uh, that's not, that's, uh, this is not what I want to be happening. Let's break that and that. Perfect. 
So my cards actually um, keep their x, y value when they, or their x and z value when they're pushed up and down, fun fact. <laughs> not like that's super relevant, but you just want to be careful not to bump these minecarts. Uh, when you're nudging them into place, you just, just use pistons. Um, in uh, our unloaders here, you can just nudge the minecart because it's just one of them, but when there are more than one, then they collide with each other and not just you, and then... And everything destroys, and it's, it's the world's not about you. And then your parents get all mad, and they give you a long speech, and then I'm going to finish these and then get back to you. Okay, when you have your groups of minecarts in place, you can rejoice, because you're done with the whole design. I'm lying to you. All right. So, one of the things that you might want to do is place all the glass in here. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky, but it's going to have to be done. I'm going to use fill commands, because I'm in creative mode, but if, if, you're in mine, if you're in survival mode and you don't want to cheat, then I'd, I'd recommend doing something like this for the parts where there are minecarts, but yeah, there's really not an easier way to do that. Uh, it's just it's just safe uh, to do that, and uh, when you're building the next minecarts, you're going to want something to build off of, so I would highly recommend uh, doing this, because you might be smart. I mean, you might know, hey, I'm not going to bump these minecarts, because I know that if I do, it's going to be broken, and everything's going to not work properly, but hey, who knows about Timmy over there? He's just going to wander over with his freaking sword with sweeping edge and destroy all your carts and make you do this all over again. So, just just put the glass in place. Uh, nope. Nope. Closer, but nope. 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 Aha! First try! So now that we got the glass in place, we can move on. So, the next bit is going to be a little bit trickier. Let's see if I can do this off memory. So our middle four blocks are here, and our input chest will actually be kind of off to the side a bit, but that's that's not important right now. This, I, I'm completely wrong. There's no way this is correct. Uh-huh. Uh ah. Okay. Yeah, no, I can I can totally do that. All right, I got some insightful knowledge. It turns out I built this wrong. <laughs> I am so sorry, people. Uh, these minecarts are not split. What did I break? These minecarts are not supposed to be there. They are supposed to be over. Uh, the minecarts are supposed to be centered over this piston. So what you want to do is face them into the uh. Ender chest, kind of like so. You can really do this whatever order you want, but I'm going to be doing it like this. So let's place one, two minecarts. I would not advise using redstone blocks because if you, they they might fly off in a direction you don't want them to. Um, don't worry. Uh, I'm hoping nobody screwed this up because I will be putting something in the video to say that I built it wrong and to ignore me because I'm stupid. But there we go. Now the minecarts should be in place because what we want to end up with are all four groups of these minecarts to be uh, one block apart and then two blocks apart this way. So I don't know why I didn't think of that because I don't, I don't know, I guess I'm nervous or something. All right, I'm going to get these others in place and then I'll show you what it looks like. Aha! It should look like that. Now I can use my command that I totally got on the first try to get this in place. So now, now that we're done screwing up, what it should look like is a shape like that. Do you want to know why I'm using fence posts? I'm sure you do. Uh, there was something that was supposed to be easier if I used f cobble fences. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. These minecarts in the middle are supposed to be aligned over this detector rail so that they're not on top of the detector rail, but they're still hitting the detector rail. You can do this with fences or cobble fences. Uh, fences are easier because you only have to bring one material type. However, to get this minecart up here, which are actually eight minecarts, you're going to need to center it in the middle of the block, and the only way to do that is with a mob head. So, if you don't have a wither skull, or a zombie skull, or a creeper skull, or a, a skeleton skull on hand, then you're going to need to use cobble fences. That's just kind of a heads up. It shouldn't be too difficult to get a, a wither head, but if you use cobble fences, it should look a little something like this. Basically, in the corners here, we need to align it against a fence, and this should be it. I'm going to build it this way, um, but I'll show you how to do both. So this is actually, um, uh, things are about to get a little bit more complicated. Hooray, we don't need ender chests anymore, because we're aligning in a different way. So this is going over two minecarts, so you're going to want to put one, two minecarts, drop it down, and bring our trusty old pistons back into play. Push you here, push you here, 
And just like that, this minecart will be over it. Now this is the nifty little trick I was showing you earlier. Uh, one of the, th <laughs> okay, one of the things I forgot about. We're actually going to need to push a block down in here because we're going to need a detector rail on this block and this block. So let's actually get this in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a slab. We're going to place it there and and there and then here. I'm going to push these down, and then we're going to push that down. And I'm going to break all our pistons, and I'm going to break all that. Okay, so what I'm actually showing here is, uh, this is leading to something, I promise, is the minecart is actually hitting the detector rail. You can see it's activated. However, in our use case, if the minecart is sitting on top of the rail, it'll actually be too high up for these minecarts down here to hit, uh, or something like that. So what we do is we align it just like so. And uh, that's kind of it. Or either that or the minecart above will actually end up landing on the rail. I think that might be, the, I don't know. It doesn't look like that's actually completely necessary in this case. But if the minecarts are floating on top of the detector rail, they will definitely not be aligned in the way that we want them to. They'll center on top of the rail itself. So that's why we do it this way. Now, uh, you are going to notice that we can't push a piston in because we have a minecart in place, and that'll screw everything up. So what we're going to have to do is utilize the fact that Minecraft is a three-dimensional game, and we're going to have to actually go up and build above it, which is super difficult and annoying, I know, but I also realize we are working with... Okay, uh, the, fence po the fence post will mean you can place it against it, but uh, just to make it completely perfect, we're going to want to build it like this. So we're going to want one, two minecarts in here, drop it down a block, use the piston to, to push it there, and then break the piston, and then do it like that. I understand that doing that in survival mode is going to be a lot slower, and I apologize for nothing, because it's not my fault. And fence post is not necessary, and that's not necessary. Perfect. So now we should have two minecarts perfectly centered over this this spot here. So what uh, this is going to look like is the exact same thing on the other side, but we're going to have uh, eight mine carts in the middle here to feed all of these carts. All right, let's move on. So we're going to need one, two mine carts in here, drop them down. It gets faster the more you do it, guys. I promise it's so much easier once you've done this 400 times. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go check out my one input 256 output where I had to align a lot of mine carts. So what's happening here, dun dun dun, is the mine cart is actually a little bit off. This will still hit the detector rail, but it's not going to be aligned properly. So what I'm going to do is push another cobble wall down in here, make its friend not so fat, then I'm going to pull out this block, uh -huh, and we're going to push it one more pixel closer. Just like that. Nuke didn't know how to do this, so yeah, I'm calling you out, man. Should have known that. And then the same thing on the other side. So we're going to want to break this because it's too fat. We're going, to incur we're going to encounter the exact same problem I just showed, and then we're going to make it like this so it's aligned against the fence post. We're going to want, uh, yep, yeah, one, two minecarts, break that, utilize our Y value here, and push the piston in like so. Uh, use the same redstone block. Use the same redstone, use the same. Use the same redstone block. Uh, use the same redstone block, and then drop the mine carts down. And now it's not aligned properly, and that's gonna forever bug me. That's okay though, because it's not gonna change anything, and I don't care. So we're gonna need to get rid of all of these cobble walls, just like so. Oh, I broke a mine cart. All right, we're gonna want it. it er, we're going to want two mine carts here, break the rail, place the piston, power it there, break the piston, place the piston, break the piston, delete the power, drop it down a block. Okay, so now we're going to actually want to remove all of these, make sure it's just like that, and then you want to go into your invent I mean your command or whatever you're choosing to build this with, and then up your Y value here, and fill it in with glass. That way these are permanent, you don't have to break all your minecarts. Woohoo! And now we've got, I think, 16 of our minecarts in place. So let's place 8 more of them. So this is the part where it gets a little bit trickier. We need to center a minecart on these four blocks, which is actually a lot easier than one might think. So, to get this centered, let me just focus, because this is either going to be really easy or really difficult. So this is the part where you can either use a mob head or a pane, based on how you did this. So I'm going to use a pane, because I don't care. Nuke likes them to be centered, but I don't I don't really I don't care. A pane or an iron bar, either will work. So these mine carts, uh, okay. So it needs to go something like this, and then we need 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight minecarts, and then you can actually nudge these because they're on a rail. Ah! No! No! Get out of here! Uh, okay, alright, well, now we have a lot of fuel carts. No, 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 we're not using you. Crap. Um, I'm actually going to leave that minecart in place because we might need it later. That's why you place the glass, people, because you'll screw everything up. One, two, I'm going to take a piston, push it in place, drop it, and then look at this. When you change the Y value, <gasps> they all stay in the same place. Isn't it crazy? All right, so now this one minecart, in fact, you've actually made a one input, I guess, four output here. I'm just going to double check that these minecarts are in the exact correct spot because if I screw this up, I'm going to have to start over. <gasps> okay, so these are kind of they need to be on a half slab see you know guys this is this is why you check this is just so complicated all right so we're gonna try this again with the minecart up on top of a rail one two three four power the piston break the piston and drop it down okay so now that you've got your minecart on top of the half slab just like we totally did right the first time <laughs> Uh, okay, and you want to get it uh, aligned just like so. Now, before I make another mistake, we're going to double check the design over here because I don't want to screw this up. So this minecart is a little bit trickier. We are going to have to keep them on top of the, the rail this time because we are utilizing an activator rail to uh, disable them. So if you don't know, when you power a minecart with an activator rail, a hopper minecart with an activator rail, it actually disables it. So I believe... I believe we're going to need this block right here. So I have no idea how Newt got this in place. Probably pushed in with a piston. That seems to be a reoccurring theme here, doesn't it? Let's go down from below, get dangerously close to powering your minecart, get it all in place. There we go. So we're going to need an activator rail facing this way, because we're going to need to align it against a pane. And then we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight minecarts against something that aligns it properly. And then we're going to build up a big wall. Trump would be proud right now. Uh huh. Get everything so that these don't fly out. And then you want to align it against the, uh, the, the rail just like that. There you go. And just like that, our minecarts are in place. So let's do this. Let's update our command here. We're going to want to make it go to another block. Actually, let's make this go up to like 25. <laughs> And then what you can actually do is replace air. So this means it'll only place it where there are air blocks. And then this is where things get a little bit easier. Above this minecart, we are going to have a shulker box loader. You can see it'll look something like this. All right, prepping the area a bit here. Uh, we are ignoring all of this other wiring here, guys. We will be getting bat. Why is that supposed to be extended? I don't care. Okay, because that's, yeah, got it. So we're going to follow the schematic to the T, because if you screw any of this up, you're going to probably want to... Um, not replace blocks? I don't know. So, uh, this is going to be a basic shulker box unloader. I did not do the wiring for this, by the way, so if I screw this up completely, then blame whoever wired this, because I'm pretty sure most of this isn't necessary, but uh, being not in the mood to redesign any of this, I'm going to go ahead and not. So, this looks like it's decoration, so I'm just going to go ahead and place normal blocks on top of it like so. This chest was placed by me. I, I can claim full credit to that. So apparently we have two droppers facing back and forth. I don't even think that's necessary. They are not necessary. Okay, I don't know what the I don't know what the hell's going on here. So we're just gonna ignore that, I guess. Oh, man, so many so many redesigns, you people. Uh, this is a completely separate circuit. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually an indicator light to tell you that the design is running when it's running. So we're just gonna ignore that for now. Uh, what I actually have here is moderately important. So we are using a shulker box loader as half of this input. So you are gonna want your shulker boxes to go somewhere. Uh, we could have used like a water stream or something. Um, uh, I decided to be fancy and just put it into a hopper. So that works too. Uh, huh, dropper needs dispenser needs to be facing that way, and I believe we have one more set of minecarts to go, which is why I'm still focusing on this. So this is where things get a little bit complicated. These minecarts, let me go into spectator. I do not want to bump these. These minecarts need to be just barely on top of these minecarts, but also not in the middle of this block. So. This is uh, <laughs> this is how this works. So we're going to have one chest actually gets unloaded by these minecarts, and then this goes into a shulker box unloader that unloads at eight minecart speed. So super duper fast. And okay, let me just focus. I am back. So what we're going to want to do is align the minecarts on top of these hopper minecarts here. So we're going to want it to be aligned up here, just like so. 
We're going to want just the usual. I guess you guys can guess how many I need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. Place the piston. Place the redstone block. Break the piston. Break the other piston. And then this needs to drop down onto a full block. This is a mistake I have made before, but these minecarts need to be um, sitting on top of these minecarts without breaking anything. So they need to be kind of just over this dispenser. So what we're going to do is... How did he... Oh, that's clever. I like that. Apparently not break any, not place any blocks at all, because these minecarts will just sit on top of the other minecarts. I'm not going to worry about decoration, but boom, I'm not going to place any blocks into this, but that is one of your inputs. Uh, if you want to be super fancy and then go one, two, three, no, I think it's just two. You can place a chest over here, and then that'll be your shulker box loader, unloader, thinger of sorts. So... We're going to need another piston over, oops, I meant to do this. We need a piston back here, and then it's going to need to have to have an observer, which you can't place because we just put minecarts where it would normally go, so you can just do that. And then we need to have a bunch of normal blocks here because a lot of things are going to need to happen. So first off, we're going to need to have a comparator because this thing needs to be smart. You know, it needs to know when you have items. It's got to know what you know, okay? Because you're not going to want to have to think about this. It just needs to know it, you know? And then we need to have, I guess, an observer facing down. That must, yep, okay. And that's why, I, I don't know why these droppers in the middle were removed. This could obviously be done a lot smaller, but this is all, this is all propi propri proprietary. Uh, this is just meant to work for our design and not really anybody else's. But what's going on here is this piston is supposed to be a trap chest, and then it'll actually update a dropper update a up, update a dropper which will then power an observer which will power this block here so you do not want to bump the minecarts I assure you that when you bump the minecarts bad things happen the world explodes and everything everybody dies it's bad it's like an Avengers movie okay and then you just get that and then that should click a, a dispenser, but it's not a trap chest, because I don't care. So that's supposed to be a shulker box loader. Just note that for this thing to work properly, you are going to have to have a block here, because the shulker boxes predominantly fly upwards. That's why everybody puts the hopper like this, because shulker boxes and items like to fly up when you break them. I don't understand it. But uh, this hopper will catch every single um, shulker box, because this activator rail down here is being powered by... It's supposed to be powered by this two tick repeater, but this is supposed to be a full block. I did also assume that this observer used to be facing down, so that might be powering the activator rail. I don't care. This should be a somewhat functional shocker box unloader. Um, if, if that doesn't work, then yell at somebody in our Discord chat, because I didn't do that wiring. But we're just going to go with it anyway, because that's the kind of thing that I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that some of you can recreate that on your own. So... For the minecart tracks, let's continue this up. Let's just go right back to placing rails because this is just, this is, we need a break, you know, from all this wiring and stuff. So the rails are actually going to come up all the way up here. Actually, no, they're not. They're not. I'm lying to you. I'm lying to you. No. The rails are going to come up to here. That's why we need the glass blocks. So this will stop the minecarts from going in place, and then there are going to be minecarts here. In total, there should be seven minecarts for each of the wings. One there, one there, and then five here. And, um, you know, let's take a moment to appreciate that all of these minecarts are in place. If you've done this and you've successfully aligned 40 minecarts, and you should you should give a, you know, a pat on your back, because that's not easy to do without any mistakes. I mean, I obviously made none. <laughs> okay, so these rails are still not powered, and I'm not sure why. I'm going to figure that out. All right, totally figured out. I just placed some redstone blocks because it doesn't really matter where these go. You can do the exact same thing down here. I mean, you can power this with levers or torches or whatever your little heart desires. It does not affect the design at all, as long as that redstone block's not... Yeah, I don't think it is. All right, so let's get out of here. Uh, this is going to be a wire that I don't think is necessary, actually. Okay, I'm going to put this in place anyway. This is ancient wiring, meaning uh, I wired this up in haste, and I think Nuke went with it, but I'm not entirely sure that it's even necessary. But if it is necessary, then what it should be doing is automatic. This is supposed to be a half slab. Automatically turning itself off when it's detected that this observer, is, that this dropper is out of items. So what does happen in is when you power this system on by force, it'll actually, you know, force off all these hoppers. And um, what this system does is reverse that. So that should be completely fine. Let me just get everything in place. And you're going to need two 
droppers facing into each other. So this is what's called an RS neural latch. You'll be powering one side of it, and then when the machine is off, it'll be powering another side of it, I guess. I'm not really entirely sure how that's working in this situation. But we are going to need a couple observers facing down, that's all I know. And this observer line is going up through the middle here. This is um, an indicator light from the fuel being empty. I'm not going to wire that up because that's, once again, proprietary and probably not something you're going to need in your design. But if you want it, then you can go ahead and add in that, uh, that dropper line. Or if you want a light somewhere that tells you that you are out of fuel, then you can you can put that whatever you want wherever you want. But if you want to build it in this design, you can see that it's just it's just a line of observers facing straight up. And then that goes all the way up to here, I guess, where it doesn't do anything because I cut off the schematic. Continuing, our input is up here. So what happens is we have a lamp here, and then somebody presses a button. You can see it, it's right here. Which, magic. And then there are a bunch of observers that face straight down. One, two, three observers. And then this doesn't matter. This could literally be anything. I'm going to place a rail. I'm going to place the wrong rail. Look, schematic's going to get mad. <gasps> no, it's wrong, but it's right, I promise. And then this needs to be something Nuke put in a redstone a minecart, so I'm going to put in a minecart. All right, this design is almost done, you guys. Are you as excited as I am? Because you should be, because this is pretty awesome. In a second here, I think most of this is actually unnecessary. The whole design should actually be functional by this point. But what should be happening here is you're going to have a 1280 furnace array that cooks stuff really fast. And actually, what you can start doing is let's get rid of this schematic. Uh, let's actually do some minecart loading. So I know this has gone pretty fast, and I will have to do some testing camera on camera or off camera, I'm not sure. But this should be completely functional. So to fill in all the minecarts, you're going to need one, two, three, four, five minecarts into here. And then you might have to trigger this by hand initially. But you're going to want one minecart to go over there. And then uh, uh, one minecart to go over there. And then replace your... And then... Re and then replace your block because that'll be necessary. So what it should end up looking like is something like this. So the minecart should be stacked all the way to the top and then there should be two in place. Uh, this is why I had F3 plus B. This is not an error. Okay. <laughs> So what should have happened is, for whatever reason, I broke a rail. Uh, you can easily get these in place by just doing that. So actually, that might be easier than what I was just showing. You can just place my card here and here. Just make sure they're over these pistons, because if they go off to the side, the piston won't be able to suck it back down. Um, and then that'll be a problem, because if the pistons can't suck things down, then they, they just don't work, okay? Three, four, five, and then they go right up to the top. And then the same thing on the other side. The entity count rises. Okay, so we're also going to need four fuel minecarts. I shouldn't have left that in place because it doesn't have anything. I'm going to fill up a shulker box full of fuel. And for the creation of this thing, I actually turned off uh, tile drops. But you are going to need tile drops to be true if you're ever going to want your shulker boxes back. I guess that's kind of up to you. It doesn't really matter for me because I'm in a creative world. But hold down middle click. You can get all that stuff in there. Get your shulker box back. Fill all of this in place. And because I didn't make this a trap chest, I'm going to need to trigger this once on my own. And what you can see happening here is this should immediately start unloading. But all of the my items will be getting stuck here. So what that is doing is effectively waiting for you to put a minecart in just like so. And that'll just start collecting all the items. Uh, what was in the original design that I should note now is there was a piece of glass right here. That just stops it from flying out, but the piston should just um, push it down straight. So you shouldn't actually need this block. Remember what I said earlier about this torch being off? Yeah, well, it's off now. So when that minecart is full, you are totally safe to just come in here, place another minecart, and let that refill. And then when that, once that's full, you can put um, more minecarts in. You're just going to want to regulate this slowly. In the end, you should have three minecarts down there, one minecart up here. I guess you could put in a fifth one if you wanted to be safe. doesn't really matter. Um, if you wanted to fuel this with anything other than coal, by the way, this whole system is designed to work for coal. It will refuel every furnace uh, exactly the same speed as coal and or charcoal. Uh, you could also use blaze rods. Blaze rods are preferred. They are definitely better. Um, but... Uh, if you use anything other than sticks, well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to get your engineering hat on and make this a lot faster with a lot more minecarts. So I'm just going to let this fill up, and there you go. So once it's empty, uh, which we should be getting pretty close to, oh wow, nice timing. So hopefully this completely empties, if it doesn't I'm going to have to trigger it on my own, boom, 
it'll just empty out the minecart or empty out the shulker box. It'll go here, and then it'll just start emptying another one. So you can you can store a lot of fuel. I mean, like you can just tack on a hopper to this chest, and then you can have millions. You can have all the coal. All the coal will be emptying into this thing. But what should be? Oh no, I forgot something, guys. I forgot something. No, it's really not a big deal. In here is oh oh man. Okay. All right. We're going to we're going to do this. It's going to happen. Uh-huh. <gasps> no, I can't place that repeater. No. Okay. I'm going to ignore that repeater or that comparator. This is supposed to be a Yeah, hold on. Hold on just a second. Ah. Oh, okay, you guys. All right. All right. I I got done goofed. It's supposed to be an activator rail. Okay, all is well. I'm going to get out of here cuz I'm scared. Um, however, one thing that is optional is if you want this thing to start up when these minecarts start backing up and become full, you can go ahead and place uh, like a redstone block next to the comparator. This is pretty optional, but what we have in the system, because Nuke did it, is he made it so that there's a comparator facing into it here, and then I think there's a cauldron with a signal strength of 1. So let's just get that set up. The uh, easiest way to do that is just do it like... So, and there you go. So when these items start backing up into the minecarts, it'll automatically turn the system on and start fueling. However, if you want to start it by hand, then you can just click this button, and then that'll, as you can see here, uh, unlock the hopper, drain the items out, and then it'll start working. So, if you wanted to turn the machine on, you could just put in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 10 items. And then that'll actually start the clock if I didn't mess anything up. Uh, does it still think it's out of fuel? Um, it shouldn't think it's out of fuel. Let me just put that back. And then this piston should have pulled its block back. It looks like it's inverted, so let's just grab that. And there you go. The clock should start firing. So what should happen is it should start sending minecarts out. <gasps> it's functional, kind of. One side's not working. That's a problem. I think I have a solution, though. So if this side's not working, then one of these pistons isn't firing. So it worked on that time. You are going to have to bug fix this. I'm showing this in the tutorial because if I'm having problems, you might be having problems. Because if you followed everything I did to the T, then it should be working fine. But it looks like every other time it's not powering this piston. Maybe one of the blocks I thought earlier was necessary, but isn't actually necessary. I'm not entirely sure. So it looks like this outer piston's not firing. Ah, you see what the problem is? There you go. That is supposed to be a solid block. So now that should be working completely fine. Now, theoretically, if we had put items in the system to be cooked, they'd be getting cooked right now. Uh, as if I check in any of these furnaces, some of them should have gotten fuel, depending on where the fuel carts were set. There we go. So these mine, these, this mine cart here is actually refueling all these furnaces. And theoretically, if I would have thrown items in, they'd be getting cooked. And if I would have remem remembered to put the mine carts in down here, I can actually do this while I'm talking, then it will be collecting all the stuff. So yeah, that should pretty much be done the end of the tutorial. That is the closest thing to a block-to-block -block tutorial I've ever done. Um, this is probably not the best tutorial ever, and I'm pretty sure somebody could have done it better than I did, but hey, I, oops already gave plenty of excuses earlier so that nobody can complain or whatever. I'm just saying that if you didn't like this tutorial, then leave a dislike and leave me hate mail because that'll really cheer me up. And then you can go ahead and download Schematica and do it right. So there you go. And there will also be a world download for all this if you guys want to go ahead and just, you know, ignore the tutorial. If you would have paused this at the beginning, you probably never heard this and you're just using the world download because you know how to do things the smart way. Why would you listen to some random guy ramble stuff if you could just, you know, build it correctly? I don't know. Alright, so let's just get all these minecarts in place, and then I think we should just throw in some items just to see it cook. So if this thing has been running properly, because it doesn't have any items in the system, this observer dropper should have started getting full, but unfortunately it doesn't look like this is happening. So I'm not really sure why this dropper didn't pull its items back. Maybe I neglected to build something properly. That's very possible. Uh, yes, there we go. There should be a torch down here. Okay. Torch and a block. Okay, so this... Let me just power this. What should have happened is this torch should have immediately moved that item back so that this hopper should be slowly draining out. And now this thing will run nine more cycles. However, I can just clear my inventory right here. Let's throw in... You know what? 
Some of the members on my Nerva will get this reference. Let's throw in, well, not two stacks of cobblestone. I'm going to throw in a lot more than that. Let's throw in, let's say, a small chest of cobblestone and then th watch this thing cook. So immediately, these minecarts should be filling up. So what you should have been seeing is these minecarts are alternating between inside and outside. So you see the outside one's just fired. That's because the inside one is still filling. And theoretically, if you throw in more items than I did, every minecart should be completely full when it distributes items. But, uh... That's not the case here. So, yeah, I'm going to look into one thing off camera, though. It doesn't look like this is... Ah, that should be a solid block. And this piston should have something. Oh, no. Hold on. All right, so if you're having a problem where the rail isn't actually switching, then what I'm finding is this piston should definitely have a block in place. So it should be here right now. Okay. So what that should be doing is switching this rail so that the minecart goes to a different lane each time. It looks like this same wing has been getting all the all the fuel, and that's completely fine. Uh, that's that's just a bug in the system that I didn't quite encounter. If you have any more issues like that, then I would definitely recommend swapping out half slabs and normal blocks because it looks like that was the problem here. But let's just wait uh, for this clock to trigger so that we can see if this piston's doing everything right. Okay. There you go. That looks like everything is proper. And it's spitting out items. So, yeah. That's important because, like I said earlier, the rail actually gets switched. So that the, the fuel minecarts are going to four different locations constantly. And um, it, it goes down one rail and then gets switched to four different outputs. So you can see it's now going to go down that one. And then later on it'll go down a different one. And there you go. The whole system should be completely functional. I'm going to call that a victory. So I'm going to observe this off camera, and if nothing's wrong, then this should be the first outro. Then, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If this doesn't work as intended, then hit us up on Discord. Don't do it in the comment section. I'll probably, I'll see it, but I won't like to help you there. If you really want assistance on this, or if you want to say thanks or whatever, then uh, follow the link in the description to the Minerva Discord server. We actually have a chat called Technical Minecraft, which is perfect for this stuff. So if I'm not available, then somebody on there I'm sure would love to help you. The people involved in this project, were me, Timus, 24, Nukla, and Jeff, or this not the end. Eno was an awesome spectator. Uh, he helped a lot in the um, morale side of things. This has been the largest tutorial I've ever done, and I hope this video isn't too long. And more importantly, I hope it's easy to follow, because a lot of this was rambling, but for something this complicated, you know, once again, just g grab the schematic, world download should tell you everything. Um, there are some things you're going to have to do yourself. Like, if you want to decorate this or move the input chests up here, which I would recommend, uh, you're going to have to do that yourself. Or for an output, I mean, really, it's just an item stream. Just make it go wherever you want, really. That doesn't matter too much. But, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, let me just check one thing. That should be unloading slowly because it detected that it's out of items. That's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, thanks for watching.